Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how to populate your HTML tables using the Fetch API. Okay, so right here in this example, uh, this HTML table was empty when the page first loaded up. So that means that there was no table headers or table rows. So this is all loaded uh, using Fetch and it's done asynchronously. Okay, so how do we achieve this? It's actually very simple. Okay, so going inside this tab right here, we're going to be beginning from scratch or almost from scratch uh, to create what I just showed you. Um, what I mean by almost from scratch is that I've actually included my own styling for the table already. So um, I'm going to assume that you have your own tables or your own table styles as well. So we're just going to be focusing on the JavaScript for this tutorial, but just keep in mind that in order for this to work, um, you're going to need to have a table like this inside your HTML with an empty table head and an empty table body. So essentially, uh, the JavaScript is going to be populating uh, these two elements with your rows. Okay, so going inside this JSON file right here, this is where, um, of course, my data is stored for, um, for that table. Okay, now... I'm using a JSON uh, file here, but this can easily be some sort of API endpoint to your backend server or some other sort of endpoint. So you're not limited to using a JSON file here. This can be a regular endpoint done using PHP, Express, Python, whatever you're using. Okay, now, but uh, the actual structure of this JSON content is important. Okay, so right here, I've got a JSON uh, as my root, it's a JSON object um, with a key called headers and it's an array. So this first array here is every single uh, header for the table, um, you know, as strings. Okay. The next uh, property um, of this uh, JSON object is, of course, rows. So the rows property here is once again an array. But this time it's an array of arrays. So it's a multi-dimensional array and each item inside here represents a single row and they should be presented in the same order as your table headers. So of course, the first element here matches to the first element here and then so on. So of course, user ID, ID, name, occupation, then age. Okay, so as long as you have a structure like this in your response from your server or your JSON file itself, just like this, you should be good to go. Okay, so going inside the JavaScript now, let's write a function that is going to, of course, fetch that data and then populate it inside the table. So this function is going to be asynchronous. So we're going to say async function, then call this function here load into table. Okay, this function is going to take in two parameters. The first one is going to be the URL for the JSON file or your JSON endpoint. The second one is going to be the table element itself. So the reason for uh, providing these two as arguments or parameters is because we want to make this function reusable. Okay, so um, you don't want to hard code your URL and your table inside here because then the function is a bit useless um, in other contexts. So want to actually call this function right down here or wherever you want to call it. Okay, so for example, if I call the load into table function here, I can pass through the um, the URL. So I can say that's going to be dot forward slash data dot JSON. Um, in this case, because of course my JSON file is located um, in the same directory as the HTML. So of course that dot forward slash is going to work for that scenario. And the second one here is going to be the actual table to populate. So of course, we're just going to say document dot query selector, then pass through here table. So essentially just selecting the first table on the web page. In my case, it's of course this one right here. So going back inside here, um, the reason why this function is asynchronous is because we want to make use of the await keyword in JavaScript while we are using the fetch API. Okay, so essentially it just allows us to, uh, you know, pause the code or let the code run as if it was synchronous um, while using uh, fetch. Okay, so let's just get into it. So the first one here is going to be, or um, the first thing to do inside this function is going to be to create a new constant called table head. 
it's going to be equal to table dot query selector then pass through here the table head element. So basically now this table head simply refers to the T head inside the HTML and the same goes for the body. So let's make a second one here called table body and make this go to uh, T body. Okay, cool. Next up, we're going to actually be calling the, uh, the fetch API to retrieve the JSON file. So for this, we're going to say const response is equal to then say await then pass through here fetch then the URL so it's going to fetch the JSON URL and by using the await keyword basically because as we know fetch is going to be asynchronous which means it can run um, you know while other things or um, you know if we if we didn't use the await keyword here then the code below here would be running while the response is still coming back. So by using the await keyword, um, the code below here is not going to run until the response comes back from the server or whatever it is, um, you know, for this file. Okay. Then once we've got the response back from the fetch API, we can say const, then using object destructuring here, we're going to use curly braces and we're just going to say headers then comma rows. So this will be equal to response.json. So once again, um, the JSON method is going to be asynchronous, which means if we place a wait here, it's going to work in the exact same way as the previous line where it's going to wait until this operation is complete before moving on. So what is this doing? When the response comes back from the server, sorry, when the response comes back, right, um, it's an object containing information about um, what we just retrieved. So things like HTTP status codes, uh, headers, but also the data itself. So the whole JSON content. Okay. Then in the response object, we're basically saying, let's treat the, um, the data that came back as JSON. And this is going to convert um, the JSON string right here into a native JavaScript object. Okay. So it's probably going to be easier if I actually remove, uh, you know, uh, this um, this section here, and I just say data. Okay, let's just do uh, let's just go with that for now, and I'll say console.log and then pass through here data. If I save this, go inside the browser, as we can see, we've got here in the response, we've got the object that has come back from the JSON file. Okay, so essentially that JSON here has converted our string into a native JavaScript object. Okay, next up, going back to my previous uh, code with the curly braces, if I say headers, then rows, essentially what it's doing is, it's it's called object destructuring in JavaScript. Okay, so basically, we're simply grabbing the headers property from our object, which we just saw, and putting it inside this constant. The same goes for the rows. Okay, if this key here or this property was not headers exactly this code wouldn't work this headers and this roads need to match up with these two here and so we've got our headers and the rows okay next up we need to clear the table as it currently is so we're going to say clear the table this basically just means let's remove all of the existing content from the table when the page first loads up, of course, you're going to have no content inside of there. So um, essentially, that means that this code will be useless for your first call. But if you were to call this um, this function again on the same table, if, for example, you are refreshing the data, then this line here is definitely going to help you out. So we're going to say table head, oops, table head dot inner HTML is equal to just simply an empty table row. So of course, we're going to be placing our headers inside these, um, sorry, inside this element. Okay. Next up, the exact same thing for the table body. This one though is going to of course be empty because we need to populate those rows using the, um, the rows property or the rows constant right here. Okay, cool. Next up, we can populate the headers. Okay. So for this one here, we're going to simply loop through every single header. So we're going to say for of for const header text of 
then pass through here headers. So for every single um, header inside that array, we're going to create a new header element. So we're going to say const header element is equal to uh, document.createElement here, then pass through th to create a new th element inside the JavaScript. Okay. Next up, let's set the text content of that element. We'll say header element dot text content is equal to then pass through here the header text just like that. Okay. And lastly, we can simply append this th to our table row um, from up. Sorry, from up above. Okay. So for this, we can just say table head dot query selector. We're going to be selecting that tr um, element right there. And we'll say dot append child, then pass through here the header element just like that. If I save this, go back inside the browser, we can see we've got the header contents being populated inside the table. And of course, one of the main benefits of this solution is that you can go inside your JSON file and you can you can add a property here. You can um, you can add, for example, something like uh, city, right? save this and go back and city is right there. So you're not limited by your front end JavaScript code um, as to how many uh, columns or how many rows you can have, um, you know, as part of your uh, table data. Okay, cool. So going back inside here, um, we can now focus on populating the rows. Okay, so for the rows, it's going to work in a very similar fashion. We're going to be looping through once again. So we'll say for const row of rows here. So for every single row inside the response rows, remember this rows here is an array of arrays. Okay, so looping through the first array here, um, we're going to be creating a new row element, just like this one up here. In fact, I'll just copy this and go right down here and I'll say const row element equal to then say tr right inside here. Okay. Now, for every single, um, you know, uh, every single cell of information here, so this one, this one, and this one, and this one, we can loop again. So we'll say for, for of, const cell text of row. For every single cell inside that row, we can create a new cell element. So once again, copy this line and paste it right down here and we'll say cell element. Okay. Equal to this time and we'll say, um, you know, TD instead of the TR. Okay. So we're creating a new TD for every single cell text. Now, right down here, we can say cell element dot text content and we're going to be setting that content. So we'll just say it's going to be equal to cell text right there to inject our cell text. And next up, we can simply append the TD to our TR. So we'll say row elements dot append child, then pass through here the cell element, just like that. Okay. Then the last step outside of our loop here is going to be to append the row to the table itself. So we'll say table body dot append child, then pass through here the row element, just like that. Okay. Remember, the table body is referring to the T body in the HTML. So if I save this now, go back inside the browser, we have our fully loaded up table right there. Okay, so um, that is how to create or that is how to populate your HTML tables using uh, the Fetch API. Remember guys, like I said earlier, you can easily, you know, uh, call this function as many times as you want. You can add your own little refresh icon if you want, or you can update the data every one minute or whatever you want to do, you can do so using this function. So um, if today's video helped you out, drop a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.